right to the next presentation. They are all step by step connected, so you can see. That is the second stage of our investigation. First of all, we detected them in surface water and groundwater, and after that, we did some experiments to assess their mechanism of removal, how they are transporting during groundwater uh, transportation, uh, and all other things. So, when we do, first of all, to say that this is about tracer test and behavior of selected pharmaceuticals. When we do, do the tracer testing and the reactive and non-reactive transport, we need to, we, we are doing that to, to get some more information. Sometimes when we are doing some jobs or something ex experimental, we don't have enough data. So we are conducting tracer tests and some other experiments to gain more, more data about the filtration characteristic and all other processes. For one of the pioneers in Serbia who conducted this research was my professor, and he did it on uh, Žičko polje with panels. He said, mentioned that yesterday, and then he concluded that panel is readily degradable in oxy conditions. So, these tests are very, very useful. Uh, in this test, we used Comergel flow field. Uh, so, groundwater was pumped. In, this is the well. We pumped the water from this well, and we injected uh, the uh, uh, chloride in here. And after that, we injected uh, pharmaceuticals. My colleague is here, Nevena, she will talk later. We also injected uh, pesticides some in other, other experiments. During trace tests, we need to, to monitor what is the conditions. So we monitor flow, what is the level of groundwater, what is the electric conductivity, so we uh, can calculate what is the concentration of chloride, uh, and we conducted with this, this gear here, which is represented. We have Thompson overflow, PCM Pro, sound, and something. Many of colleagues helped me. I, I wish to thank them for help. So this is, this is a schematic picture of that. We injected here uh, 1,000 liters of, of uh, chloride. Uh, uh, and the rate of the flow was set to six liter per second. We have two experiments. In the first experiment, we wanted to check if this site is working. So we checked what is the retention time of the chloride, and after that, we began with the second, second experiment. Here, we monitored the level of groundwater with serial divers and also electric conductivity. And also on the outflow of the well, we monitored also the conductivity and many other things. Also, we drilled new monitoring well. We did some, some, uh, some exploration and we have some green, green data about that field site. So you can see on this picture. This is also a picture of the, of the gear that we use it. It was uh, high Q40D multi parameter probe, and we monitored all the parameters. Among them are also electric conductivity, uh, re redox potential, uh, dissolved oxygen, pH, and, and what? Temperature. Also, colleagues from the Belgrade, they helped us with the analysis, with the analytic, analytical methods. There, there was more than 60 samples of groundwater, and to, to conclude about that, that after successful solution of uh, chloride in one hundred liter injection tank, it, le it was lasting for 55, approximately 50 minutes, and we have the breakthrough curve of chloride. There is a time concentration in milligrams per liter, and Approximately about 200 minutes from the beginning of the experiment, we have the maximum peak. 
After that, we injected pharmaceuticals, trimetoprim, carbamazepine, diclofenac, and metamizol metabolites. Their, their initial concentration, and it was also in, uh, continuous injection, and it lasted for approximately 36 minutes. Uh, retardation coefficient was calculated with this formula, and we used the linear absorption isotherm to calculate the partition coefficient between water and sediment. After that, we can calculate analytically, calling, my colleague is doing that on the, on the MT3DS model, on the mod flow, so we calculate with analytical methods, with the model, we are doing on our own model, which is developed in the institute, I will mention in the third paper, WODA, this is solver, new no, numerical solver. So we get some results. These are the KV, or the partition coefficients for, the, for these compounds. I will tell what is, why is this important. Also, we can see this, these are the curves, that is a concentration of chloride versus concentration of diclofenac versus time. So there is a, some retention about two times after the chloride, also for the carbamazepine and metamizol metabolites. You can see the difference for the second one, three and point five times, and for trimetoprin, who has a literature, literature highest absorption potential, he was about 11 times after the chloride. Why is this important? When we, can, when we see literature, we have some coefficients. We put it in the model. We are modeling the, the nature. So if you have different results and you are modeling in Australia, Serbia, Germany, and you use literature, you will not for you will not be on the right way. You will you can miss it two or three times, five times. So this is a representative result for this location. And what is very important, we have literature data about the sorption capacity for the technological processes, and we have some relations about that. It is between carbonazepine log logarithmic partition coefficient for carbonazepine is about 2.5. But if we put it in the model, it's much more higher than in, in nature. So there is no or organic matter almost at all in groundwater. And we all know that most of them are sorbing on groundwater. There is a, another phenomenon that is a physical absorption, which is more, more, most important because we have huge bioreactor. It's not a small, small scale like in laboratory. We have two pentagrams of this is, we also did this, 20 grams of ground, some sediment. After that, we have columns, one meter. And after that, we have field tracer test, five meters by 10 meters. So, and the best way is to, we have all the model to calculate it. So this is a better uh, approximation. So, <coughs> We can, based on these results, we can determine the absorption capacity, and we can know that there is a significant difference between these results and literature data, because some of the papers they are not representing what are the conditions that they are doing absorption, what is the sediment constitution, and all other things. I can, uh, I would, I would like to to show you just a little movie, if, if, I, if I have some time. Three minutes, if it's working, I hope so. Professor Milovanovic filmed it. I, so in the context of this experiment, I, I would like to show you just little, without tone, because it's, it's on Serbian. I will mute it. This was two years ago. This is me, all sweaty in June. We are doing some experiment, and this is what is interesting, maybe to see. <laughs> this is injection piezometer. We have two monitoring piezometers. After that, you will see it 
this is overflow well on drainage canal, it's not so clearly water, but just this is the well. We pump on the constant flow with 6 liters per second and extracted water, there is a measurement equipment about flow and all other things. We have three, these are zero divers which are monitoring conductivity and, 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 and the level of groundwater simultaneously. We injected the chloride, after that pharmaceuticals. We just talked a bit, a bit about that. What is interest, interesting also to show. Mm, I will. Uh, we monitor groundwater level by hand also. Mm. This is the equipment for monitoring of the flow. Sounds, ultrasonic sound. And this is the Thompson overflow. We put their high pool probe and we monitored electric conductivity and measure the values. And also we measure the flow of this. So just to show you a little bit. Now I will, I will go to the...